Hey, welcome back and good morning. And I'm blessed to be with you today on this Thursday as we continue to work through uh, the acronym of unity as it pertains to our fifth value, which is the intentional witness of unity. Now, last week we broke down the U of unity, which is understanding our part. This week we are continuing to break down the N which is nurturing others within unity. Now, if you were here on Monday, you would have heard me give you a whole recount of what it looks like for us to step into our God-given identity. Then if you were here Tuesday, you would have heard me wrestle with this notion that we have to recognize our interdependence, our, our desire or need to cooperate with others. Then yesterday, this aspect of grace that is one for our eternity like it, our eternal destination is dependent on the grace like god's grace given us to save our lives is the grace that we should be serving the lives of other people with and so one grace is like the glue that keeps it all together when we realize like it can be difficult to nurture other people within unity one because i might be difficult or if we're being honest right or or two just other people can be difficult too and so we've got Romans chapter 12 that says verse 4 and 5 that, that we all belong to each other. But man, sometimes our behavior doesn't reflect that. But then there's this thing called grace that Paul continues to talk about. He mentions it in verse 3 and then he reiterates it again in verse 6. He says we all have different gifts according to the grace given to each of us. If it is prophesying, then prophesy with accordance to your measure of faith. If it is serving, then serve. If it is teaching, then teach. And if it is to encourage, then to give encouragement. If it is Giving, give generously. If it is to lead, do it diligently. And if it's to show mercy, do it cheerfully. He's saying, if then, if then, if then. In other words, if God has gifted you, then activate the gifts. If God has gifted you, then activate the gifts. And he's saying that one, not only was it grace that you've been saved, we talked about that yesterday. In Ephesians chapter 2 verse 8, it says, for it is by grace you have been saved. Here in Romans 12 verse 6, it is for by grace that you've been gifted. If you can prophesy, if you can teach, if you can lead, if you can serve, if you can encourage, if you can show mercy, do these things by activating those gifts and serving others with it. When I do that, not only do I realize I've received grace in eternal saving grace, but I've also been given grace to do my part in nurturing the body of Christ with these gifts that he's given me. And as I do that, I realize I have the ability now to equip other people, to, to serve other people, to build up other people within the body of Christ. It is almost as if my purpose in this kingdom body of Jesus comes alive. I love uh, my, my, my man, Martin Luther King. <laughs> you know, when he gave that quote that says, if you've been called to, to, to sweep streets, then you should sweep streets as if God Almighty and all of his angels are in heaven saying, that is my street sweeper. And he's been doing it like in a way that has the host of heaven just elated that you sweep streets so well. It's interesting, this dynamic of grace, because it is for me and my belief that grace is the equalizer of all people. It's the equalizer because it was never anybody's works that got them into heaven, but always what had been done by Christ in grace for us. And then the gifts within the body of Christ are not anything that any one of us have manifested on our own, but by grace have been given by God alone. You check that? That means if I have the ability to communicate, if I have the ability to teach and to shepherd, that is nothing I can brag about because it is given to me by God in the same way that saving myself cannot be done because I would brag about that too. 
In the same way for you, not only have you been saved by grace, but the gift that God's given you has been given to you by grace because it's the great equalizer. It's what helps us understand that you and I are on the same team in the same body, though different gifts, those gifts have different functions. It is still for the same kingdom purpose that God had designed for his one body. You see the unity in that? Grace is what keeps us together. Now, remember, activating the gift is the important piece. It's one thing to know what your gift is. It's a completely another thing to activate it. Look at all the if-thens. If your gift is prophesying, then prophesy. If your gift is to serve, then serve. If it is teaching, then teach. He's saying, if you know what it is, then use it. <laughs> Activate your gifts and you'll begin to see your kingdom purposes come to life as you nurture others into unity. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for being generous with your grace to save us. And thank you for uh, your generosity, for the grace that helps us serve other people's lives. Lord, we're grateful that you nurture us the way that you do so well. But you call us to be a people that give and see that being greater than it is to receive. So, Lord, in our giftings and in the things that you have given us, let us activate that giftedness to build up the body of Christ, to equip the body of Christ, to serve the body of Christ. We love you, and it's in your name we pray. Amen.